special welcome to all of our visitors and guests who are here with us this morning, as well as to everyone joining us by video and podcast. We want our visitors and guests to know that we practice open communion. We invite all baptized Christians to receive the Lord's Supper with us today. We have recently begun receiving communion at the altar rail again. As the deacon directs you forward, please feel free to kneel or stand at the rail as you are most comfortable. If you would prefer to receive communion where you are seated, please let the deacon know and communion will be brought to you. I'm going to take a deep breath because we have a lot of announcements to highlight this morning. Following the service, we invite and encourage families to come up front to take pictures. Also, please remember to take your flowers home with you. We would like to extend our special gratitude to everyone who contributed for flowers to beautify our sanctuary for Easter this year. Our Spring Youth Sunday is next week, April 16th. Please let me know if you will be able to participate in the service and what part you would prefer. A reminder to our church council members that our monthly meeting is, is on Monday, April 17th at 7 o'clock p.m. Please let any of the trustees or Tom Iser know if you will be able to attend. Our monthly youth night is coming up on Sunday, April 23rd at 7 o'clock p.m. Please let Shannon Lantalon know if you will be able to be there since we will be having some special guests for a special presentation. We invite our children and youth who are here with us today to please take an Easter coloring sheet with you to color or decorate and return by next week, the 16th, to give to our shut-ins. Our youth are collecting donations of new socks and underwear, as well as personal items, for the Valley View Clothes Closet. There is a collection box at the back of the sanctuary, and donations are being accepted until Sunday, April 30th. Thank you for helping our youth with this service project. The circus is coming back to Farmersville. It will be out at the park on Thursday, May 4th, with two shows, at 5 o'clock p.m. at 7.30 p.m. Tickets are $13 for adults and $8 for children ages 2, two, two through 12 and seniors 65 and older. Ronnie, Daryl, and I, each one of us have tickets. Please see any of us if you would like to purchase tickets in advance. I believe we have a special birthday today. Beverly Childers, would you please stand? We thank God for another year of life for you, and we ask for God's blessings on you and all of your family, especially your family who are here with you today. The other announcements I leave to your own reading, are there any other announcements for this morning? Let us begin with prayer. O Lord, our Maker, and Redeemer, and Comforter, we are assembled in your presence to hear your holy word. We ask you to open our hearts by your Holy Spirit, that through the preaching of your word we may be taught to repent of our sins, to believe on Jesus in life and death, and to grow day by day in grace and holiness. Hear us for Christ's sake. Amen.
Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Bless the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The scriptures tell us that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord.
put this banner together? Who wants to tell me what it says? He has risen indeed. He has risen indeed. Because today we're celebrating something special. We're celebrating the day Jesus came back to life from the dead. Now it's important for us to note, when Jesus died, he really died. Like he completely shut down. But then he came back to life. And that's the great miracle we celebrate at Easter. Usually when we talk about miracles, we talk about something that we didn't expect, but it, hap but it happens anyway, and that's what happened with Jesus. Nobody really expected him to come back to life, but then all of a sudden, boom, he came back to life. And so today, we thank Jesus for everything he did for us, we praise him, for who he is, and you say, Jesus, I want to follow you because of everything you did and because of a miracle you did. So everybody repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus thank you for everything you did for me. Thank you for everything you did for me. Amen.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter, beginning at the first verse. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Dear brothers and sisters, grace and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen and it's so wonderful that we're all here this morning. Whether you've been coming regular, regularly throughout the year, whether this is the first time you've been here this year, or whether this is maybe the second or third time you've been here this year. We're really glad and excited you're here, so welcome. We also encourage all of you to stick around and visit afterwards. We're just all really happy to have you all here because having you here makes today even more special. So we want everyone to stay afterwards to help make this day even greater than it already is. Today we are all gathered together, as we do every year, to celebrate Jesus' resurrection. But we also have to remember that we are not simply here to remember some sort of historical event that happened long ago. Jesus rising again from the dead means something for us right here, right now. He is with us just as much as we are with each other. We are here to spend time with Jesus, which is why we're also encouraged to spend time with each other, to make the time real and special. On the one hand, Jesus' resurrection is like something that happened in the past, say, the signing of the Declaration of Independence, that still impacts us today. But the difference is, Jesus' resurrection impacts us in a different way, because the signers of the Declaration no longer, of Independence no longer exist, and so what they did only exists in memory. But with Jesus, it's different. Jesus is alive right now. And so who he is and what he did is not just some historical memory. It's something that impacts us right now. Why? Because Jesus lives forever. He died a real physical death where he stopped breathing. His body shut down completely, and it seemed like there was no coming back. And even though he had told his disciples repeatedly that he was going to be handed over to, to be crucified, and that he would rise again after three days, they still didn't understand. So when he died, they were lost, sad, and confused. And it was hard for them to believe that Jesus was alive. Yet, as we hear in today's Gospel reading, he came out of the tomb in a dramatic way, with an angel rolling the stone away, and then appearing to the women who had come to prepare his body for burial. Not needed, since he was physically alive to get, again. In other words, don't be dead in your fear and sadness because you think Jesus is dead. What the angel and what Jesus himself encourage us is be alive again. Live in joy and hope because you know and you believe Jesus is alive. Since Jesus is alive, it's time for us to be alive again. 
Now is the moment for us to wake up and shake off everything that's held us back and held us down for so long. Jesus couldn't be held down by death, and he was victorious over it. So we can't be held down by anything trying to keep us down, because Jesus has already defeated it. It's time for us to be who we are, and who we've always meant to be again. People who no longer live in fear and negativity because of what could happen, but who live in hope and optimism because of what is happening. Jesus is alive, and he is making everything better. It's also time for the church, the whole body of Christ, to be alive again, especially after the effects of the pandemic and everything else that's happened in the world. Church families all over, all over the country and all over the world have had to struggle with pandemic conditions, lower attendance, lower giving because of economic and attendance realities, increased expenses, political and social divisions, you name it, there's a cause. But here's the reality, and here's our wake-up call. Now the world needs us, the church, more than ever. The world needs to hear some good news with all the bad news that's been going on. That things are going to be better because Jesus is alive and reigns supreme over all the world. And if everyone is able to focus on Jesus and follow Jesus, then there will be an end to fear, ignorance, hatred, violence, division, and injustice. With the church setting the example for the rest of the world and being able to change the rest of the world as we are changed and go out into the world. But the church needs to get back on track and focus on Jesus again, in order to help the rest of the world focus on Jesus. So we, the church, are to be committed to our true purpose and calling, following Jesus, becoming like Jesus, and bringing people to saving faith in Jesus. Today, you're invited to commit your life to Jesus. You've spent most of your life coming to church, coming to worship services like these. But have you ever taken a moment to think about why you're here? And do you really believe it? Brothers and sisters, here's the good news. Everything Jesus did, dying and rising again, he did for you personally. That means accepting that Jesus sacrificed himself for your sins, shed his blood to make you clean, died to save you from death, and rose again to give you eternal life. So, does it mean anything for you personally? That's the question to ask yourself. Does it really mean something special for you? Jesus being alive does mean something for you. It means whatever is happening in your life, there is always someone in control, looking out for you, ready to help you at any moment. It also means that all your sins are forgiven, everything you've ever done has been wiped clean and forgotten, and you can have a fresh start and a new beginning for your life. And especially if you are looking to start your life over again, Now's the perfect opportunity, because if you commit your life to Jesus today, he will give you the new start you're looking for. But what's keeping you from committing your life to Jesus? Perhaps there's been some hang-up or prejudice that's been keeping you from listening to Jesus and hearing what he wants to tell you. Well, you're encouraged today. Turn off the noise. Because that's all it is, noise, distracting you from listening to Jesus. Maybe you have a lot else going on in your life right now, and your personal relationship with Jesus hasn't been at the forefront of your mind. But think about this. Everything else you're involved in right now will either change or disappear. 
but your relationship with Jesus will always remain the same and he will still be committed to you. Maybe you think you're not good enough for any reason to call yourself a Christian or a believer in Jesus. Well, here's some more good news. Being a Christian doesn't depend on how good you are, but only on the fact that Jesus died and rose again for you and has accepted you just as you are. Whatever you feel guilty about, Jesus has forgiven you. If any of you want to talk more about what committing your life to Jesus means to you, or if you need prayer for any reason, feel free to talk with me after the service. In the meantime, you're invited to take a moment to just close your eyes. Now, bring to mind... <clears throat> Bring to mind anything that's been weighing you down, causing you worry, or holding you back. And imagine you're holding it in your hands. Maybe you've been holding on to it really tight. Maybe you've been holding on to a looser grip. But the point is, whether you realize it or not, you've been holding on to it. And you don't need to hold on to it any longer. So I invite you now, turn your palms upward and pray in your own way for Jesus to take it from you. Let go of it and give it up to him. And as you come forward in a few minutes to receive communion at the altar, after you go back to your seat, you are invited to pray again in your own way to commit your mind and heart to Jesus. You are encouraged to invite Jesus into your life, to get to know him in a way you probably never have before, and give yourself to him. Jesus died and rose again for you. Now the best way to thank him for what he's done for you personally is by committing your life to him personally today. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things remain. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated for our senior choir anthem.
Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and ever living God. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord. For he is the true Passover lamb who gave himself to take away our sin. Who by his death has destroyed death and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of, of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people. For the forgiveness of your sins, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. This is the Lord's table, to which he invites all who believe and are baptized to come and feast on his body and blood. As the deacon directs you forward, you may feel free to either kneel or stand at the communion rail as you are most comfortable. If you desire to receive communion today, you are invited to hold out your hands in this or similar fashion. Children and all others who are not yet communing are welcome to come forward to receive a special blessing. Should you desire an alternative to wine, juice is available in the inner ring of the tray. Please indicate to the assisting minister if you would prefer juice. If you would also prefer to receive communion where you are seated, please inform the deacon and communion will be brought to you. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Come, for all is ready.
part of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Pray for the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ.
Please stand for our post-communion liturgy. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. What he has done, let everyone who seeks the Lord proudly bear his name. He recalls his promises, leads his people forth in joy with shouts of thanksgiving. Alleluia, alleluia. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy, you would strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.